Hey guys, welcome back. This is the fifth in a series of six videos where we look at the key definitions that you need to know for the National 5 Physics course. Now, what I'd recommend is to make your own flashcards from these definitions by writing the word or term on one side and the definition or the meaning on the other side. So let's get started. To kick off the dynamics definitions, we have the term scalar, and a scalar is a quantity that consists of a magnitude or size only. And this is different to a vector, which is a quantity that consists of a magnitude, i.e. a size and a direction. So direction is important for vectors. Next we have speed, which is defined as the distance travelled per unit time, or the distance travelled by an object each second. And it is a scalar quantity, so we don't care about direction when we're talking about speeds. Next we have average speed, which is the total distance travelled by an object measured over the total time taken. So notice the phrases total distance and total time here, which is important for average speed. Next we have instantaneous speed, and this is defined as the speed of an object at a particular moment in time. You could also say it's the speed at a specific point in time or a specific snapshot in time. Moving on we have velocity, and velocity is defined as the displacement per unit time. It is a vector quantity, so velocity is also known as the vector equivalent of speed where we care about a direction. Our next definition is acceleration, and this is the change in velocity per unit time, or the change in velocity each second. This is also a vector quantity, and it's given by the gradient of the line on a velocity time graph. Moving on, we have gravitational field strength, and this is defined as the gravitational force or weight per unit mass. Or in other words, it's the gravitational force acting on one kilogram of mass. Next we have Newton's first law, and this says that an object will remain at rest or move at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. We then have Newton's second law, which says that when the forces acting on an object are unbalanced, the object will accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. And remember the equation that we get for Newton's second law, which is F equals ma. Moving on we have free fall, and free fall is the movement of any object under the influence of gravity alone. So if you think about a skydiver jumping out of a plane, they are said to be in free fall because they are only experiencing the force due to gravity. Related to free fall is the phrase terminal velocity, and this says that for an object in free fall, a constant speed is reached when the upward force in the object, i.e. air resistance, is balanced by the downward force in the object, i.e. the weight. So terminal velocity is just another name for that constant speed that is reached. Next we have Newton's third law, and Newton's third law says that if an object A exerts a force on object B, then B exerts an equal but opposite force on A. Or it's defined more commonly as for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you just pick whichever one you think you'll remember. Moving on we have projectile motion. Projectile motion is the curved path taken by a projectile due to its constant horizontal velocity and constant vertical acceleration, so these two factors are what give a projectile its curved path. Next we have the definition for a satellite which is related to projectile motion, and this is defined as a special type of projectile that follows a circular orbit due to its constant horizontal velocity and constant vertical acceleration. So it's these two same factors which we saw for projectile motion that give a satellite its circular orbit. Moving on to types of energy now, we have work done, which is a form of energy which describes the force applied to move an object a certain distance. So you can just think about the equation for work done to define this one, because it's got a force in it and a distance in it. Next we have the gravitational potential energy, and this is defined as the energy stored by an object as a result of its vertical position, i.e. height, above the surface of the Earth. Or in simpler terms, any object that is raised above the ground will have gravitational potential energy, this stored energy. And now we have kinetic energy, which is defined as the energy possessed by a moving object. So any object that is moving will have kinetic energy. Lastly, we have the principle of conservation of energy. Now, you might also see this termed the law of conservation of energy. And this says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can change from one form to another. Or in other words, we can't just create energy from nothing. It has to change from one form into another. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.